Mr. Alan Moody. He is Chief Investment Officer at Union Bancaire Privé, or UBP. It's one of the major Swiss asset managers for both private and institutional clients. Alan, thanks very much indeed for joining us as well. Thanks for the invitation. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about, uh, well, where we are with Europe right now. We've got the Greek bailout all done and dusted now, but mm -hmm. uh, do the gun sites and uh, the debt markets actually start looking elsewhere now? Um, we do look elsewhere. Uh, we think the market is no longer focused on the, um, on the problems inherent with the peripheral countries in, uh, in Europe. Is Much that, has is changed. It, is that priced in now? Is it just being ignored? It's, uh, it's been priced in. Markets never discount the, thing, the same thing twice. Mm. What markets are looking to now is the impact of the, uh, of the change in policy settings from the ECB and um, more recently from the Bank of Japan and the impact those will have on both financial markets and leading on from that uh, on, the, um, on the real economies. Are you talking about the fund flows, of course, LTRO and also the stimulus uh, that uh, Japan has as well? So Ab absolutely. LTRO 1, LTRO 2, we believe were major factors indicative of um, uh, an underlying change in the policy settings at the ECB. Mr. Draghi's regime is very different from that presided previously by Ms. Mr. Trichet. It does seem uh, it's quite a different culture there, isn't there? I mean, it's, it's quite a volte face. It, uh, it was um, indicated by the very first meeting that Mr. Draghi presided, uh, where contrary to uh, expectations, he cut interest rates, <laughs> indicating to, to us that um, a new team was in control at the, uh, at the ECB. Right. Well, I, we see, of course, these fund flows are manifesting themselves in the equity rally that we've seen in Asia, you know, mm -hmm. that it, it, that's been part of it, but uh, also is Asia now just saying, okay, well, Europe's problems are their own and we can actually be okay without actually, yeah. you know. I mean, I think what you have to uh, realize is at the end of last year, markets were priced for disaster. Everyone was looking on the, uh, on, the, on the black side of the equation and no one had factored in any possibility that there could be some, uh, some improvement in, um, in fundamentals. What we got from the ECB was measure sufficient to uh, draw a line under the systemic risk in the European banking system. So one of the major uh, headwinds uh, blowing against equity markets and financial markets in, um, uh, in aggregate uh, ceased to blow uh, as of mid-December. Okay, and of course that has been partly responsible, as we just uh, alluded to, for the mm. equity rally that we've seen, and it's been very based on, we saw it yeah. with QE1, we saw it with QE2 mm. uh, in the States, and of course we're dealt our own now. Now that's uh, in a sense a liquidity injection for financial markets and uh, mm -hmm. so we see them gain but when do we actually see them now so, sort of like a, a teacher? When, <laughs> when do we see the impact on the real economy? That's what everyone is, uh, is asking. Well, and, and so look what happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. getting to that but I'm talking about equity markets before yeah. they start looking at the fundamentals and that's what I'm mm -hmm. going to get at. Yeah. yeah. And looking at fundamentals is, uh, is there a more positive outlook for the economy? Mm -hmm. In the U.S., it took us 18 months to two years from the initial uh, uh, implementation of quantitative easing one and then QE2 uh, for some improvement in, the, um, in U.S. statistics and the, uh, and the health of the economy to, to show up. We also have um, uh, more credit flowing to the, uh, to the U.S. economy, so a generally much more healthy situation. So it takes time, but in the interim, equity markets do uh, perform the function that they have, uh, discounting what's coming in the future, and European equity markets and also Asian equity markets today are discounting that improvement uh, coming in, in due course in the, um, in the economy. Well, when we look at what you should be doing in terms of investments, I'm going to highlight, you know, you're talking about uh, corporate balance sheets being strong, so therefore mm. the corporate bond market is something that you're looking at. Uh, looking yeah. also at gold, now, what that suggests to me is, of course, that yeah. you perhaps are not that uh, optimistic mm -hmm. about what happens next. Um, not entirely, but I'll, I'll talk first of all about the equity markets, yeah. and then I'll move on to, uh, to talk about gold. In, in terms of equity markets, we do prefer equities over bonds. Uh, recently, we've reduced our allocation to uh, corporate bonds and to high-yield bonds, uh, thinking that the upside potential in equities is better for the, uh, for the remainder of this, uh, this year. Among equity markets, our uh, preferences are energy stocks. Uh, we like European equities more than we like uh, the U.S. equity market. And uh, within emerging markets, we like Russia, uh, again linked to our energy view, and, um, and Asian equity markets. Uh, among those I'd highlight are Thailand, Malaysia, and also China. Coming here, speaking to, uh, to investors, I find a great deal of skepticism. 
people have been uh, blindsided by the rally we've had. Everyone looks to the bottom back in September, October last year, sees that we've risen, depending on the market, up 30, up 40, up 50 percent over, uh, over that time frame, and thinks we've missed it. We, on the contrary, uh, think it's not too, too late. We look at fund flows. Fund flows over the last quarter were positive into bonds and negative into, uh, into equity mutual funds. Right. Plus 40 billion, minus 27 billion over that time frame. Volumes uh, have been much, much lower than they were only 18 months ago, around 40% lower in terms of equity volumes. There has not been participation in this rally. Investors have missed it. And uh, we see the rally continuing. But there's doing more upside, is what you're saying. Yeah. Quickly to gold as well. Uh, yeah. That would uh, always traditionally seen as a haven. Uh, we view gold as a haven, but against what? That's the question you have to you have to answer. Our view is that gold is a safe haven against the depreciation, the devaluation of currencies. We don't view it as a hedge against equity markets, but as a hedge against the loss of value in uh, developed market in particular currencies. That's why we hold a very large allocation to gold uh, in our client portfolios. Gold today, as it has done for the, uh, the bulk of the last year, represents one quarter of our recommended allocation to clients. Uh, Alan Mudi, thank you very much indeed for joining us.